Welcome to our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry, sponsored by the new Greenbook.biz, the world's premier black business directory. We are broadcasting from our worship campus located here in the city of Memphis, Tennessee. We are the church where family comes together, and everything begins with it is finished. Now please receive our senior pastor, Jeff Galmore, as we join our service already in progress. Amen. Amen. Will y'all do me a favor? Hold your Bible or device with me and say, Father, thank you that I have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to me right now. Amen. Thank y'all for that. Today, for a few moments, I want to talk about the great escape, escaping the corruption that's in the world. If y'all would mind turning with me to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews. My former pastor would always say God is a coffee drinker because he brews. I feel like that's kind of corny now, so I won't be using that. <laughs> Praise God. Hebrews chapter 13, please. Hebrews chapter 13, and we're going to read verse 17. Verse 17 reads, Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Amen? The Bible says that we are to obey our spiritual leaders and to do what they say, and it says that our spiritual leaders are responsible to watch over the souls of God's people that's been assigned to them, and it says that spiritual leaders are accountable to God, accountable to God. The job of the pastor or leadership team of any church is to, number one, lift up Jesus. That's number one. Always lift up Jesus. Number two, to watch for the sheep. To watch out for the sheep. And number three, to advance God's agenda here on the earth. Go to my turn to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. We're going to go to verse 15. Spiritual leaders. Today we're talking about escaping the corruption that's on this earth. John chapter 21, verse 15, the scripture reads, After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. And Jesus says, then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked him the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Amen. Y'all read with me. The job of the pastor is to lift up Jesus, is to feed the sheep. Watch this. One of the ways that the pastor takes care of the sheep is not by monitoring your day-to-day -day activities. Would that, that wouldn't make good sense, would it? No, no. The way we watch for your souls is by feeding you a proper diet. Amen. It's by teaching you the word of God. Amen. Amen. Amen? That's how we watch for your souls. We sow the word, and then God takes care of the rest. God takes care of the rest. Amen. Our job is to lift up Jesus, to teach you the word of God, to reveal Christ to you, and to advance the kingdom. This is why in Hebrews 13 and 17, it says, leaders, you know, you're responsible to God to teach them the word. Amen. Nowhere in scripture does it say that preachers are accountable to the sheep. It says we're accountable to God. Well, this is important because we're not here to appease people. This is not our job. To make you feel good. Or, or to tickle you the right way. 
<laughs> I'm teaching this for a reason today, and, and where, where we're going as a church, as a church. It's my job to teach the word. And uh, sometimes the word might make you say, ouch. Uh, it's just flat out, sometimes the word might be offensive to you. It might be. Jesus offended people. He said, blessed are those who are not offended in me. Amen. Because his ministry was offensive. If you were out of pocket, it was, it was, it was offensive. <laughs> we're not here to be a part of the world's culture. We don't do the world's culture. Amen. Thank God for the church. Praise God. The greatest preachers or pastors of any era, they followed this model. They were committed to the word of God. Amen. The preacher, all the preachers that I looked to, looked up to, look up to, they were, they had an unyielding commitment to teaching the word. They teach the word in season, out of season. Amen. But there's an example that we're going to follow today, and I want us to, to glean and uh, to take a point from Jesus Christ. If y'all turn to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to look at a couple of examples of how Jesus handled things on the earth. I'm moving very quickly. In about 13 minutes, and we'll be done. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to read verse 24 and 26. Jesus is talking, he says, For false messiahs, false Christs, false prophets will rise up and perform great signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. See, I have warned you about this ahead of time. If y'all would do me a favor, say ahead of time. Amen. Jesus says, I told you about this ahead of time. So if someone tells you, look, there's a Messiah out in the desert, don't bother to go and look. Or look, he's hiding here, don't believe it. Jesus says, I'm telling you ahead of time what they're going to do. Amen. Amen. If y'all turn to John chapter 13, please. John chapter 13. Verse 18 through 20. John chapter 13. We're going to read verse 18 through 20. Verse 18 reads, I'm not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But this fulfills the scripture that says, The one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this ahead of time. If y'all say ahead of time. Amen. He says, I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I'm the Messiah. I tell you the truth. Anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me. And anyone who welcomes me is welcoming the Father who sent me. We're developing a pattern here, church, very quickly. Jesus, as he walked and he talked, and as he talked to people, his disciples and the, and the children of Israel and those who would listen to him, he told them things in advance. He can tell them things in advance because he is the Messiah. If you have one chapter over, please. John chapter 14, verse 27 and two, through 29. John 14, verse 27 through 29. He says here in verse 27, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled. If y'all do me a favor, say don't be troubled. Well, this is very powerful. I just, listen, church, I, I, I don't do fear. I don't do fear mongering. I'm a man of faith. I've been developed in faith for over 30 years. But Jesus, the pattern we're watching, Barbas, is he told them things that were coming ahead of time. So that they would be in fear. And that's part of my goal here today is to let you know that there are things coming. I'm telling you ahead of time. Then in just a few months, they're going to tell you everybody's getting ready to die. Everybody's going to die. They're going to tell us that in just a few months. They're going to tell us the virus is coming back again and everybody's got to go get more shots. They're going to tell you that in just a few months. I'm telling you, they're going to tell you their gangs that are coming to take over the country. They're going to take over the country. Y'all got to go, everybody go, go get your bullets and your guns because the gangs are coming. Jesus said, don't be afraid. Amen? Verse 28, remember what I told you. I'm going away, but I will come back to you again if you really love me. 
you would be happy that I'm going to the Father who is greater than I. I have told you these things before they happen, so that when they do happen, you will believe. Now, if you go to Galatians chapter 5, please, we're going we're gonna to take a quick look. One look at pa Apostle Paul, who copied Jesus. He's doing the same thing we're doing. Apostle Paul copied Jesus. He took a play out of Jesus' playbook. Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, the scripture reads, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand. One more time, y'all say beforehand. I'm telling you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm headed to my close. First Peter, please. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 reads, The salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about, when they prophesied about the gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterwards. Amen. Christ, it says here in the scriptures that even the prophets of old wanted to know about this great salvation that we would experience because God told them about it in advance. They knew it was coming. They knew they wouldn't get to experience it. But they're like, we want to know about this salvation. This is important. We're closing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Just a couple more scriptures. And we're done for the day. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. The scripture reads, verse 1. You should know this, Timothy. That in the last days, there will be very difficult times. Where people will love only themselves and their money. They will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel, hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride, love pleasure, pleasure more than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from these kind of people. Here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, the scripture says, you should know this in advance. You should know in advance that this is what's coming. Amen? Amen. So, church, I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to those who are acting like God didn't tell us that what's happening on the world stage like he didn't tell us that it was coming. We already know it's coming. He's already told us. 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, please. 2 Peter chapter 1. He told us that this world was going to decay. He told us that sin would get worse and worse. Did he tell us that? Amen. He told us that men, that perilous times would come, that men would be, would, would fall, fall further and further away from God. And I've said today's stage, I've said today's, I, I, I said today's message to tell us, to show us that God told us in advance that these things were coming, but he also told us this to help us understand that while all of that's going on, we're protected. Isn't that good news? That we're safe and protected in the midst of all that's going on. God help us. I don't like that I'm seeing so many believers that are, that are caught up in the same death and destruction that the world is experiencing. We're exempt from what's going on in the world. Amen? Amen. That's not for us. That's why Jesus is taking the time to tell us, that's not for you, that's for them. 
Amen. Let's look at this as I close today. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. This letter is from Simon Peter, verse one. A slave, a bond servant, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to you who share the same precious faith we have. This faith was given to you because of the justice and fairness of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. May God give you more and more grace and peace as you grow in your knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Verse 4. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. If y'all repeat after me, say great and precious promises. These are promises that enable you to share in his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by lust. Amen. 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 Isn't that good news? Well, that's good news to me. That's good news to me that, that in spite of all this corruption that's going on in the world, we get to escape. <laughs> Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. We get to escape all of this trouble and drama that's coming on the world. Because corruption means dishonest or fraudulent conduct by those in power. It, it can involve bribery. Uh, it, it's, it's unscrupulous behavior. It's people behind the scenes doing evil and mean things to hurt the people. And God says, we have been exempt. Now, if you look at the screen with me, I'm close. This is my last scripture. It says, Ephesians 6. It says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy. If y'all say resist the enemy. In the time of trouble. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Boy, isn't that good news? Hey, listen. Listen, church. Receive this word today. When they finish with the virus is going to kill everybody. We'll be standing firm. Put on shoes that that put on that that uh, produce the peace that comes from God's word. Put on salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of the spirit. Pray in the spirit. And I want to. You see what I have highlighted? Stay alert and be persistent. Amen. God has given us great and precious promises but we must be persistent with those promises don't get tired don't let up stay alert continue to come to Wednesday night prayer amen <coughs> the banking system the justice system, Wall Street, politics, Big Pharma, sports. Y'all know all this stuff is corrupt, don't you? Y'all know it's all corrupt. All of it's corrupt. Um, Hollywood, law enforcement, it's all corrupt. But with God's promises, we can escape. Now, I'm closing, this is my last slide. I'm just going to give you seven promises. Everybody in this room, everybody listening online, you should be able to rehearse without having to look it up. Promises that you stand on in this evil day. Amen? Promises that you stand on. Number one, God has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Isn't that wonderful? We've been redeemed from every curse. That's down in my soul, Brother James. That's, that's, that's in my soul. Number two, 
God said, I'll rebuke the devourer for you. I'm not going to allow the devil to come in and tear your house up, tear your car up, steal from you, take your money from you. I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. Amen. Amen. Lay hold of that promise. Number three, by his stripes we are healed. Jesus said, by these promises, you can escape the corruption that's in this world. Amen. Lay hold of these promises. Isaiah 53 and 5. Number 4, we have abundant life. That's John chapter 10 and verse 10. Number 5, my sin debt has been paid in full. Isn't that good news? That's Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Number 6, my blessing comes with no sorrow added to it. No sorrow. Number 7, I'm protected from all harm. That's just seven. There are countless promises in the word of God that we can use to whip the devil every single time. Amen. Demar, would you do me a favor and go tell them that we're ready? You just step back there and say, Pastor said we're ready. Lay hold of these promises. My expectation is when I meet with believers that if there's something attempting to come at you or to attack you or to harm your family, what promise are you standing on? What promise are you holding on to? Because the scripture says I'm telling you in advance when these things come, you can escape. If you find you a couple of promises to hold on to, you can escape. Amen. Praise, praise God. We can escape the corruption that's in this world by holding on to God's promises. Praise God. Thank you for watching our Faith, Hope, and Love television ministry sponsored by the new Green Book Biz. You can find all previous broadcasts on our YouTube channel by searching Faith Community Church Memphis. If you would like to donate a tax-deductible gift to our ministry, please visit our website at www.memphisfaith.com. Please join us next week for more family-centered teaching. Until then, on behalf of our pastor and the Faith Community Church family, have a great week, and please remember to keep walking by faith.